Portions of this video were made possible by stripping. Lots and lots of stripping. This is a 2003 Ford F-350. It's got the six liter power stroke. It's got a bunch of problems. I did a short video about the drive line. It had three bad U-joints, two bad yokes, and a bad carrier bearing. I've got that fixed. That problem is sorted out. It has some drivability problems with the engine. It's also leaking pretty much every fluid from every place that it can leak. Both coolant and oil down the back side of the engine over there on the passenger side. I fixed the coolant leak. I have yet to find the oil leak. It's also leaking oil from the passenger side of the axle. This is a Dana axle. It's not, uh, not a fun job to fix that. So you got to take the carrier out of the axle. Well, you got to pull the axle shafts out, then roll the carrier out. And the, the seals actually go in from the inside of the, the differential there. And with these vacuum hubs, it's, it's kind of an expensive job because you're going to ruin the, the vacuum seal at the hub bearing. And uh, yeah, a lot of labor involved in that. It has kind of a, a misfire on cold start and then it just kind of bucks and shakes a little bit while you're driving until the engine warms up. It takes about 10 minutes to come out of it. And then once it comes out of it, it really runs fine. The engine has, well, it has good power now. When I first drove it, it had no power. And I found this boot here, this CAC boot had been installed incorrectly. And they got the, you can see the witness mark here where the clamp was not installed in the right position and it was just blowing all the boost right out the side of this boot so i replaced that the engine has good power now but it still has that kind of rough rough running and yeah you can almost feel feel a misfire but it's not a dead miss it's just kind of every once in a while uh, the coolant leak was pretty simple you can see right there there's a hose clamp that's on a small jumper hose. I think that's for the EGR cooler or something. Anyway, all I had to do was tighten up that hose. Not a big deal. The oil leak, I'm not sure. Uh, but the misfire, that's another story. He took it to, well, it's been to a couple of different shops. I believe he said one shop replaced the number six injector. They also replaced some part of the wiring harness. And then he had another shop look at it and they replaced all the injector O-rings. And apparently it hasn't helped the problem at all. I also noticed that the AC compressor is leaking. It's got dye, dye in the refrigerant. There's green dye all over the outside of the compressor. Not sure if we're going to deal with that or not. He really just wants to get it running, running correctly. So we're going to give it a shot. I'll be honest, I, I'm getting kind of rusty on these six liters. I used to work on them fairly often, but you know, these trucks are getting on to 20 years old now and there's just not a lot of them left around here. Well, I did a cylinder contribution test or power balance test, Ford calls it, and it's kind of inconclusive, but it will give me a code P0278, which is a number six cylinder contribution. Uh, but I don't think there's a problem with number six. There we go. All right, we want this one here. This is a key on engine off injector electrical self test. Some people call it a buzz test. All right, so we should hear it click each of the injectors in a row. Guess what? I did the buzz test a little bit earlier and we had no cylinder five. 
so that's fun. All right, that's a spare injector. Let's, uh, let's start it up, I guess, and see how it runs. See if I can demonstrate the, the misfire. Pretty good right now. Really good, actually. All right, we're out for a drive. This thing rides like an ox cart. Uh, anyway, we're having some problems here on cylinder number five, especially under a load. We'll see what happens here. It's pretty, pretty difficult to keep this thing where you guys can see it because it rides so rough. Faker to turn it around. Pretty cold this morning. Let's see what happens. We're gonna do the same buzz test. One, two. Well, that's not good. No three, no four. Two, three, six, seven, eight. Pretty sure that's what we're hearing. So we're missing one, four, and five. Well, just for giggles, I want to see how it runs with all those injectors not firing. I mean, they should come back to life pretty quickly. The batteries are also spanked on this truck. Yeah, see, that might be part of the problem. It may just be that the batteries are so low that it wasn't firing the injector. Dang it. Okay, we've charged the batteries. We're gonna unplug the vacuum pump for the HVAC controls. That thing's annoying. And then we will try again to do the buzz test. Yeah, it's the same. Okay, good. So the battery is not the issue. It's the injectors. This is pretty sketchy, so maybe don't try it at home. This 50 amp JK's fuse in the interior fuse box, it powers the FICM, the fuel injection control module, 
and I pulled the fuse and put a, a jumper in place. These wires are certainly not going to carry 50 amps, so don't do this for very long. Anyway, I'm going to show you guys the current ramp for the Fickum, and we'll just see if we can see any missing, missing peaks or whatever. So you turn the computer on, or the Fickum on, and it should pulse the injectors continuously for some amount of time, and everything looks pretty good. All right, we're going to try our injector buzz test here again. Let's wait until the screen refreshes and we'll hit it. One, two, three, missing, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I know a lot of eyes roll when I get the, the scope out. This is fantastic. So we can see right here, all eight of the firing events. So if I heard it correctly, it fired one, two, three, and then we did not hear four, we did not hear five, and it fired six, seven, and eight. So that means that the Pickham, the fuel injection control module, it sent the exact same current to all eight injectors, but we did not hear the audible click on four and five. So we know that the, the Fickum is good. We don't have to worry about any wiring integrity issues. No powers and grounds, none of that stuff. We just have bad injectors. And, you know, it's kind of a redundant test because the, the Fickum, it can tell on itself. It, it monitors current and it knows if there's an open circuit or a problem with the primary side of the injectors. But, you know, when you're looking at throwing the, you know, $2,000, $2,500 worth of injectors into this truck. It's nice to have, to have some proof, have some reinsurance. You know, that's a, that's a big chunk to eat if we don't fix the problem. All right, folks. Made a call to Area Diesel Service in Carlinville, Illinois. And I obtained, I believe they call it a pro pack. Uh, but it has eight reman fuel injectors. Along with a valve cover gasket set. Some other stuff. Let me get this stuff unpacked and we'll we'll have a little chat about it. Man, what the heck is banging down the road out there? Hope it's not coming here. All right, guys, here's the deal with this truck. For whatever reason, the guy who owns it, he loves it. It's his baby and he wants to fix it. He wants to fix it right. Yeah, I tried, or I offered to try some snake oil, see if we can improve the, uh, the injectors, and he declined. He wants to just replace all eight injectors, and I think that will, will solve the problem. So here's a crash course in how the six liter Huey injectors work. So it's a hydraulic electronic unit injector. It uses high pressure oil to fire the injector. There's no injection pump, there's no injector lines, this is not a common rail system. It's kind of its own, its own thing. So you got a nozzle here at the bottom that injects the, the fuel. That's the same as a normal injector. Fuel comes in here on this little screen port between these two O-rings. There's actually a passage drilled in the head that feeds the fuel to the injector. And then high pressure oil comes from the high pressure oil pump into the top of the injector. Up here is a electronically controlled spool valve. It opens and allows the oil into the injector. There's a large diameter piston up here. The oil pushes on that piston. The other end of the piston is a much smaller diameter. It pushes on the fuel and that difference in diameter intensifies the pressure. So if you have a thousand or 1500 PSI of oil, you have, I don't know, maybe five times as much pressure on the fuel. 
the problem with the six liter injector specifically is that they're susceptible to stiction. Basically means that the spool valve in here sticks. It doesn't move, slide freely side to side. And that's caused by like a varnish buildup from you know deposits in the oil. And in my experience, they all do it. You know, the better that you maintain them, the longer that they'll, you can put that off, but eventually it's gonna happen to all of them. So there are some snake oils like Hot Shot Secret that, you know, they advertise that it's a stiction eliminator or preventer. And I've seen it work to a certain degree. It's not a miracle. Now on the 7.3 injectors, the spool valve up here was kind of a one-way deal. I think I haven't had one apart, but I believe that the, uh, the electronic coil opened the spool valve and then a spring pushed it back towards center. And you don't see a lot of problems with 7.3 injectors. But on the six liter, apparently that wasn't good enough. And they decided to use the electronics to open and close the spool valve. That way they could move it faster and do, do all kinds of stuff with it that they couldn't do with the 7.3 for whatever reason, more power or quieter or emissions or something, I, I don't really know. But it became kind of the Achilles heel. And the rebuilt injectors have an updated spool design and it's the design of the spool is basically self-cleaning so that they don't have this stiction problem. And in my experience, if you just replace the injectors, that problem goes away completely, as long as you're doing you know, your basic maintenance. So anyway, the injectors we have are from Area Diesel Service in Carlinville, Illinois. It's their Magnum brand. It's their own brand. And I've got a catalog from when I was down there. And they have all kinds of stuff available for these engines, uh, for everything. 7.3 Power Stroke, uh, the 6 liter, the 6.4. I mean, you can get all kinds of stuff. Intercooler boots, hoses, pigtails, fickums. There's an intake, EGR cooler, gasket sets, all kinds of stuff. And then they've got Cummins. There's some uh, Mercedes stuff. This is all Duramax stuff here, glow plugs. There's a control module, uh, tools, like there's a rear seal installer, turbochargers, head gaskets, anything you can think of. Compound turbo setups, all kinds of stuff available through Area Diesel Service. Uh, I asked Curtis down there, Curtis gave us the tour when we went down there with our, our injection pump off the old forklift. I asked him for some info about their injectors. He said that all the injectors get new spool valves, new solenoids, new harness, new connector, and a new nozzle. They're 100% tested. They have a two year, no question asked, unlimited mileage warranty. And he said that almost all of their warranty submissions are operator error. So somebody put it in wrong or they had contaminated fuel or whatever. But he said in the case that they that the problem is the injector itself, they'll also warranty the labor. So you have two, two year, no questions asked parts warranty. And then if it's their fault, they'll also cover the labor. So I don't think you're gonna find a better, a better warranty deal than that. And yeah, they sell these pro packs. He's got a video, like a parts counter video where he talks about this. They have some of these for, for different engines and it has all the stuff that you need. Yeah, let's get these guys installed. Area Diesel Service, Carlinville, Illinois. I will put links to their YouTube channel and to their website. They're fantastic people to deal with. Enough of this. Let's, let's pull the injectors. I've drained the coolant because we have to replace that hose for the oil cooler to the EGR cooler. You don't necessarily have to drain the coolant or remove the degas bottle, but since we've already got it, already got the coolant out of it, we might as well. 
make our lives easier. All right, next up is the Fickum. The fuel injection control module. This one's kind of weird, because I guess because it's an early 03, it has this aluminum bracket instead of the, the stamped steel bracket that they had later. Uh, somebody's got this all jacked up, though. There's a bunch of washers stacked up here, so I don't know what they, quite what they have going on. Well, there's your Fickum. Three connectors on the back side. A lot of times the locking tabs for these connectors are broken. And I don't know if you guys can see, but they should all look like this. They should have this kind of cap or guard on the bottom. And two of the connectors are missing that cap. So no idea what happened there. Yeah, it should have these rubber mounts in all four spots here and it's, it's only got one. So that's probably why they have all those washers stacked up. And there's the dipstick tube. And that should be it. So what I like to do, since I don't do one of these every day, just take a quick picture of the valve cover. That way you could remember which ones are studs and which ones are bolts. Save you a lot of corn fusion when you go to put her back together. There's one all the way in the back. It's the opposite, basically, of this one. And it's right up against the firewall. So we're just gonna use a quarter inch drive ratchet. There it is. And we're in. Oh, that's interesting. So this being an 03, it has the old log style oil manifold. Yeah, pretty interesting setup. This one has this flexible hose and then what they call a log style oil manifold that feeds the high pressure oil to the, the Huey injectors. Uh, anyway, that was the easy side. Now we've got to do the hard side.
that's the transmission dipstick. Usually you do have to pop it up out of the transmission. Sometimes it'll stay in, but yeah, there it went. So that's not a big deal. We'll go down, down underneath and jam it back in. The O-rings are usually fine. Worst part on the driver's side is you got the heater box here. And you gotta get these two these two bolts out. And you think you've cranked on it for long enough, just remember that it's a Ford. And the threads are eight times longer than they need to be. All right, the front one, we're going to give it the reach around from the bottom side with a regular wrench. Sorry guys, it's going to be shaky. Okay, we're in. I've actually got to do some research on how to get that that log style oil manifold off because I I've never dealt with one. If I'm being honest, so service data says we have to use a special tool that we don't have to release a quick disconnect fitting here. Uh, but it looks like we can just back this anti drain back valve out, and it should get us where we need to be. down. So the oil that's draining out of this manifold is going to be a problem later. So you're going to see it's going to take forever for this thing to prime up. Not the fuel system, but the oil system to fire the injectors. Sometimes you got to crank them for an uncomfortably long amount of time. All right, with the oil rail removed, now we have access to the injectors. And it's interesting. One of these is not like the others. So yeah, I guess that one's been replaced. That's the number six injector, which is the one that had the uh, contribution code. So I wonder if they've been chasing this exact same problem. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, this is the connector here for the injector. It's got an O-ring. It passes through this, whatever you want to call it, lower the lower valve cover. Uh, that the clip or the connector is held together with these little metal clips. Uh, you can squeeze them and get them off. I like to just remove them, but whatever you do, don't drop them down into the engine. So I'll show you guys here. With the clip out of there, the connector comes right off. No problem. And then to get the, uh, to get the harness out of this lower valve cover, I'm using an 11 16 12 point socket and what it's going to do is squeeze these lock tabs together and it should let us pop that thing right out of there. Let me get the phone first. All right, what was I saying? Something I'm sure. There it is. 
Uh, Ford sells a special tool for doing this, but socket works pretty well. <sighs> yeah, we've got a problem here on the right side. So when I pulled the oil manifold off, two of the bolts, for some reason, were different. They had a washer on them and a 10 millimeter head. Uh, but much more concerning than that, two of them took all the threads with them. So that sucks. Somebody's been here before and they, they probably over torqued them. They're only supposed to be tightened to eight foot pounds. You can see it's got another injector back there that doesn't match. So it looks like the number seven has been replaced as well. <sighs> so I don't know what we can do about that. That's a hell of a place to try to helicoil something right next to the air box. Of course, the one that's stripped out is right there. The other one is closer to the front. I can probably fix that one. But yeah, that's a big problem. That sucks. All right, let's stay focused on the injectors for the time being. Uh, the hold down bolt takes a T40 Torx. This is one that I kind of modified so that it's the right length because you will run into the heater box on the, on the right hand side. Anyway, I already cracked these loose by hand. Nice thing about the six liter injectors is that the hold down will pull the injector right out for you. Injector should all come out as one unit. There it is. Well, I thought that two of the injectors had been replaced, but actually all five of these injectors are stamped reman. They must be from different batches because they have different colored wire guides. That one's gray and that one's kind of a, a natural color. So only these three injectors here are originals. And I'll have to go back and review my footage because I've got them out of order now. But it would be, it would not be surprising to me if this was one, four, and five. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're going to replace these anyway. I don't know how long they've been in there or what the quality of the reman was. Also, this is an early 03, so it uses a different style injector than the later engines. I'm not sure what the difference is, something internally, I think with the coating of the piston or something, but uh, Ford has a, a note that you can't mix and match those, those injectors. It'll get, it'll run rough and have, have problems. So better to just start with a, a clean slate, I think. I've oiled all the O-rings. Make sure you take the cap off of the nozzle. Then we're gonna need a hold down. This guy here. And it will fit into the slot in the injector. And it's also, focus, it's also keyed. So you have to get the injector clocked the right way. And then it's gonna go right down here between the valves. Tricky part is getting the connector up through the valve cover or through the uh, whatever you call this. So we're gonna use a little pair of pliers here, maybe. There it is. 
there we go. And if you did it right, there's no chance that these wires are gonna hit the rocker arms. So we'll do that for all eight, and then we'll come back and torque them down. All right, torque spec on these injectors is 24 foot-pounds, but that is not true for every 6.0 injector. So just Yeah, do your own research on that. Okay. That's it, eight injectors installed. I got the wiring harness clipped in. Yeah, we need a fuel rail and we can start buttoning this up. Uh, this side won't be a problem. The other side, well, we're gonna have to think about that. Well, folks, I've got good news on the right side oil manifold. I didn't film installing it because I was sure it wasn't going to work. All I did was I, I ran a tap down through all of the holes and then I replaced the bolts, all of them, with new bolts that are about one diameter longer. And I was able to reach down into the bottom of the hole where there's still some good threads and all eight torqued up to eight foot pounds. And it looks good. I think we're, I think we're all set over here. Eight foot pounds is is very little torque. So yeah, I'm sure somebody just, just cranked those down, which, you know, you can't get a torque wrench on this one right here, no matter what you do, but at least the other seven they could have torqued. Anyway, all is well that ends well. On the bottom of the oil manifold, there's four of these little nozzles and they have a little bit of movement that allows them to to plug into the injectors, you know, because there's some tolerance stack up in the bolts and stuff. Anyway, the gasket set comes with new O-rings for these and you need a special tool to remove that thing there to get those out, which I have. This is the tool here, uh, but we're not gonna replace those. There's no problem with the high pressure system as far as I know. I have replaced some of those in the past, but I've never seen one actually blow out and leak. Uh, usually where they leak is down here, where it goes into the O-ring for the injector. So this O-ring right here at the top, come on, focus. And those are like impossible to replace. So if you ever blow out an O-ring up there on the injector, it's probably better just to replace the injector. Anyway, we're gonna put this back on like it is and it'll be just fine. Well, credit where credit is due, at least they were consistent. So I had to do the same thing to the left side manifold. Those two in the back there at the bottom were also stripped out, but the longer bolts, the longer bolts did the trick. So we're good. Put the valve covers back on, kind of slap everything back in here. And we should be done with the injector part of it. <sighs> yeah, I know. You guys get tired of listening to me whine and complain about, about everything. I'll tell you what, I'll leave the doors open. The toolbox is unlocked. Come on over. You can work on some of this garbage and uh, we'll see how rosy your attitude is. Let me show you the next catastrophe. Well, on both sides, one of the valve cover bolts is stripped. On the driver's side, I was able to get in there with an angle drill and install a heel coil insert. So this one should be fine. The passenger side, it's all the way down there in the corner by the air box. There's nothing I can do with that. There's no there's no way to reach in there with a tool and install a heel coil or even run a tap into that hole. They're just, I don't know, it's just one of those things without pulling the head or lifting the cab or, you know, some huge amount of work. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, it's no worse than what it was when it came in. I mean, I didn't strip it. It was already stripped. That's why we had such a hard time getting those bolts out. I don't know. Like I said, at least they're consistent. I also pulled off this bypass tube 
to fix our coolant leak down there by the turbo. This is this is the EGR delete kit, basically. So this tube here feeds the coolant back up into the intake manifold, and this part blocks off where the old EGR inlet would have been. Anyway, it has this just a piece of heater hose here, but you can see it's it's all torn up, so that was never going to seal. Uh, I got a new O-ring for here. The old one was pretty square and flat. I have to come up with a new seal for this guy here, which is the cover over the outlet on the oil cooler. Uh, I could see that the seal was squeezed out of that thing, so I decided to go ahead and replace that. We'll check this out. Still not entirely sure how I did it but I managed to get that helicoil tap down into, into that stripped out hole. It was, uh, it was quite a process. It involved grinding flats on some short drill bits and using some of these tiny little wrenches. But I think I've got it tapped out far enough I can get a helicoil in there. I can't get the actual for real helicoil install tool in, so I had to make my own. Just come on, focus. I just filed down the end of a, a regular bolt, M6. We'll give it a shot. Yeah, I just, I don't want to leave it the way it is because it, it'll leak for sure. Update. Here is the new gasket for the cover for the coolant outlet on the oil cooler. There's your part number from the Ford dealership. I've got to cut a new piece of heater hose for this, and then we can re-delete the EGR. Uh, like I said, there is a originally there was like a, a fancy hose with some O-rings on the inside, but I guess this delete kit also deletes that, and they just use some heater hose. So I think that'll be fine. It just yeah, I mean, it'll last as long as it lasts. This is why I, I just hate this kind of crap. All these delete kits, like this thing, you know, the quality of the machining is pretty poor. But that's what you get. Anyway, uh, on the Ficum bracket, this thing here, it's supposed to have some rubber isolator bushings, five of them that mount the thing to the, the studs. Uh, I couldn't find those, the Ford guys, couldn't find them. Uh, there's like three or four different designs. Like I said, this must be an early design. Then they went to a steel, like a stamp steel bracket. And then I know that the van chassis also have a different bracket. So anyway, we're going to make our own. I've got all these little rubber isolators left over from the valve cover gaskets because the, the new valve cover gasket set comes with new ones. So we'll repurpose these as isolators for the bracket. I just cut some little spacers out of some plastic tubing. A couple of washers. It's better than what it had before, which was nothing. Well, our Ficum mount looks pretty good. So this is the, the remnants of what one of the old bushings looked like. It does have a little steel sleeve in the middle and a rubber bushing. But I think what we did there will be as good or maybe even better. Uh, but we have another problem. I think I talked about this when we took it apart. Uh, the connector here, both locking tabs are broken on it, so it won't won't stay latched in place. Super common problem on these. I'd say almost all of them I've worked on have been broken. So what we'll do, or what I've done in the past, is just we'll jam something behind the connector, like a piece of heater hose or something. And if it has this cap on the back, that works fine. Uh, I don't know what we're going to do about the other ones there because they don't have that cap on the end of the connector. But those clicked in, so maybe we'll be all right. Anyway, man, this thing is a mess. Uh, I ended up stripping out one more of the valve cover bolts on the other side. So I had to helicoil two on that side, one on this side. It's just... Yeah, somebody has really gone, gone bananas on this thing. There we go. Just a little piece of 5 8 heater hose jammed between the valve cover and the back of that connector. And without replacing the connector, that's the best we can do. 
I, I think maybe the other two have been replaced, which is why that, that cap is missing off the, off the bottom side. Super common problem, like I said, uh, to the point that you can even buy the replacement connectors here aftermarket. These are in that same Magnum catalog. Oh, no, I lost it. Uh, anyway, you have to just deep pin the connector and then replace it. It's a beautiful day today. Warm, sunny, no wind. It's a nice change of pace. All right, guys, I think we're almost done. I vacuum filled the cooling system. I think all the important parts are back on. Got the Ficum. Got the glow plug control module installed. Heater hose is hooked back up. Degas bottle. Somewhere down there is our new hose for our EGR cooler delete. Uh, we should be able to try and start this thing. It's gonna have some lights on because there's no mass airflow sensor, but it should still run. Got the battery charger on it. It can take a lot of cranking to get these things started. That wasn't bad. Maybe about 40 seconds of cranking total. So we're gonna let it run for probably a half hour, maybe 45 minutes, make sure it gets all the air out of that high pressure system. And then we should be all set. Boy, that hood does not fit well at all. Is it the hood or the grill that's messed up? Something's. Something's way wrong here. Anyway, what's not wrong is the injectors. Seems to run good. We still have an oil leak. Let's see if you guys can see that. So those drips right there, that's about 20, maybe 30 minutes of runtime. It looks horrible, but <laughs> I'm telling you, a tiny, the tiniest little drop looks like a giant puddle on those diapers. So I think at this time we're going to have to let that go. It starts good hot. It's cooled off now. Well, it's still a little warm. Let's see how it starts. Beautiful. All right, tomorrow we'll do a cold start and take it for a drive. All right, folks, it's the following morning. It's pretty nippy out here, it's right around freezing. Uh, I decided that the oil leak is not coming from anywhere in the valley. I just, I couldn't tell before because it was leaking so much coolant and the coolant was running the oil down the valley. Anyway, I think the problem is, well, it's got a couple of problems, which you won't be able to see, but it's leaking a little bit from the glow plug harness. It's another piss poor design on these six liter power strokes. Uh, I'll show you, I've got a, a harness inside, but it has each, at each glow plug, it has an O-ring that plugs into that rocker box and those get, the aluminum gets corroded in our climate and eats up that O-ring and they leak. Uh, but the other leak, the big one, the big problem, I believe it's leaking from the bed plate, which you again can't see, but above the oil pan, there's another seam in the block. It's called the bed plate. It's basically, so instead of having main caps, main bearing caps. It has an entire plate that bolts up that makes up the bottom part of the mains. And that is not an easy fix. The engine would have to come out and I just don't think it would be worth it. It's not leaking that bad. 
So that's just the way it is. It's going gonna, it's gonna to use some oil, I think. It wouldn't be. After all the work this truck's already had done to it, I don't think it would be worth it to, to do the bed plate. We're going to do a cold start. I want to clear the codes out. Let's see what it came up with. So... Yeah, the ignition switch is junk on this thing. Shocker. Some communication stuff, and then like I said, mass airflow sensor, because that was unplugged. The IAT is built into the MAF. The EGR stuff, that's gonna be there because it's been deleted. Uh, what else? I see that cylinder six contribution code has cleared itself. It was still in there the last time we ran it. Uh, anyway, let's clear these DTCs. And we'll see how she starts. We'll run the gold plugs here. That sounds pretty good to me. Very good. I mean, she's hiccuping up in a little bit. Anytime. Much better. We'll have to go drive it, but it's already looking a lot better. Well, it's cold enough and kicked up on high idle. Okay, this is where we would notice it the most is steady cruise with the engine cold. And it's doing great. We don't have that fish bite feeling at all. Power balance looks pretty decent. I think we're all set. That looks pretty good, I think. I mean, of course you're gonna have fluctuations and the, the higher the RPM, the less accurate that it is, but we don't have those big consistent dips around cylinder five. And I think we also had some dips on cylinder one. So yeah, we're looking good. It's got plenty of power, it drives fine. I think the vibration we're feeling is possibly from the exhaust. I gotta check that out. Well, I think we found the problem. So that scab weld right there is broken. That hanger's doing nothing. That hanger's broken. That hanger's broken. Tailpipe looks pretty good. See the bed cross members? Extremely common problem on these Super Duties. They all rot out. Looks like it's just the ones right above the axle, though the other ones look pretty good. Anyway, I'll have to see what he wants to do with this thing. This is all aftermarket junk. Exhaust, what does that say? M B M B R P. Whatever that means. <sighs> Why can't people just leave stuff alone? We've got torches, welders, creepers, topside creepers, AC machines. You name it, we've probably used it on this truck. It's been quite a haul. Way more work than I ever expected. Uh, I'm just cleaning up a couple of small things. There was a bad, well, the end of this hose was all chewed up here for the coolant filter that they added. Let's see it here. So I just chopped that off and there's plenty of slack there still. Uh, there's a reason that the OEMs don't use these, these silicone heater hoses. These things are junk. I forget the shtick. They're supposed to be better insulated or something so you don't lose heat. Garbage. Uh, what else? It's gonna have to have a new air filter. I think I caught it with the pressure washer. Uh, these things are also junk. I hate all these cold air intake air filters. You can see right through these things. I wouldn't put one of those on my truck. Wait a minute. I think I have one of those on my truck. Anyway, I've also got the exhaust fixed. Well, this was quite an ordeal. So they had the whole rear section of the exhaust shoved backwards. So all the hangers were 
were leaning towards the rear and it was causing the the tailpipe there to hit the spare tire and sometimes to hit that shock so i rebuilt one two three hangers and got those all situated it's still pretty close to that cross member but it does not hit and then i ground all the bubblegum welds off this broken joint and i was able to shove that pipe quite a bit further up inside that joint and then re-weld it with my own bubblegum welds and that took all the tension off those rear rear hangers so it's as close to correct as it's ever going to be this is some kind of aftermarket junk exhaust yeah, the ac still had a pretty good charge so i ended up just topping it off i'm sure it's leaking a little bit i can see dye on the outside of the compressor but he told me that the compressor was replaced a few years ago and it functions fine it just has a, a slow leak so we'll keep an eye on that for now it's a expensive job to put a compressor on one of these trucks probably six or seven hundred dollars by the time you buy a compressor and a accumulator and a orifice tube and the thing's absolutely buried down there in the bottom. You got to go through the wheel well. It, it's not fun. Come on, pup. Has ever seen a dog that was afraid of wind? Max just hates it. Don't you, pup? Hate wind. Lightning, thunder, guns, doesn't bother him a bit. 20 mile an hour breeze, he is terrified. Aren't you killer? Yeah. There's never a dull moment in the Watch West Work Bermuda Triangle of repairs. That's a textbook case of taking a relatively simple job and turning it into an absolute nightmare. I think the book time on replacing the injectors is 5.3 hours. And normally it's not tough to beat that. You can be in and out of there pretty quickly unless somebody stripped out all the bolts and then and then it takes a lot longer let me tell you uh, i'm not exactly sure what happened here it could be that everyone who worked on this truck before me was an olympic class power lifter and they just they just stripped the thing completely out but i suspect it has more to do with the fact that this truck's had more work done than joan rivers if I'm adding this upright, I'd say that's at least the sixth time the valve covers have been off. So let me give you the, the list here. This is kind of a, a cautionary tale for why owning a diesel truck is maybe not a great idea. So I'm, I believe the cab's been off this truck twice. The first time they replaced the head gaskets and they had the heads machined and they did the ARP studs and the, you know, the whole works. At some point, one of the heads started leaking and they took the head, the, the cab back off and they re completely replaced one of the heads with a used head and it was machined and everything too. I don't know what happened there. He said it had a, a casting defect or something. I don't know. Uh, at some point, the ficum has been replaced. It's got a reman tag on it. This is now the third time that injectors have been replaced. If I'm reading the reman tags on the injectors right, at least the third time. Someone's done the injector O-rings once uh, it's had the EGR deleted. Uh, he said that the wiring harness has been replaced or parts of the wiring harness have been replaced. What else? I don't know, but I mean, that adds up to a lot, a lot of work. That's 10 or $15,000 worth of work. And, you know, two years ago, there's no way that would have been worthwhile. But now, today, the market for these trucks is absolutely insane. I bet that he could get $20,000 for this truck tomorrow. Uh, maybe $25,000. It's not rusty. It's been painted. Yeah, it's just absolutely nuts. Some of the 90s diesel pickup trucks are selling for more than they sold for new. Anyway, thanks guys for watching. Uh, check out Area Diesel Service for all your diesel injection needs. They also do turbochargers, you know, injection pumps, injectors. You know, I just don't have enough good things to say about those guys. They do excellent work, their parts are fantastic, and you pay less than anybody else. So I don't know how you could, I don't know how you could go wrong there. I'll put a link to their website and their YouTube channel, and maybe I'll put a link to the video where we went down there and toured their facility. Fantastic place, fantastic people, cannot say enough good things. Thanks for watching guys, and yeah.
We'll see you next time.